Hey everybody, Mike Wardinsky here. Thanks for tuning in. I've got a great video about layer mask and how to use them in Photoshop to create unique and interesting effects. But before we start, I wanna remind you to check out naturemike.com for some great how-to articles, in-field photography workshops, and one-on-one -on -one private Lightroom and Photoshop lessons. So let's dive in. So here we are in Photoshop and I've got a blue canvas here. And if I turn this top layer off, you can see I've got an orange image down below. And if I turn the top one back on, it goes back to blue. So think of these layers as stacks of paper. Whatever's on top, you see. Whatever's down below is invisible. Now, of course, we can always change the opacity and, and kind of blend them. So what if we wanted to just cut out a portion of the top layer down to the bottom, essentially like using scissors or drilling a hole through this top layer. That's really easy to do with the help of layer mask. So I'm gonna come down to my layers tab and I've got my top layer selected. And if you look down in the bottom, you see this little icon, the little rectangle with a circle in it, that's the layer mask icon. So if I click on this and that's gonna add a layer mask. Now what this layer mask allows us to do is to essentially paint right through this blue layer down to the orange one. And the first way we're gonna do that is to simply use our paintbrush. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose that. B is the shortcut. Now when you use layer mask, there's two really important colors, black and white. Black is gonna cut a hole through a white mask and white would add to a black mask. So to show you what that means, I'm gonna make sure I have my layer mask selected. I can tell because of this kind of dotted line around it. If I click on the actual pixel base layer, you can see that that edge moves. So I'm gonna go back to my layer mask, make sure that's in selected. And then I've got my black brush. And now I can simply cut a hole through. Now you can see it's not solid orange and that's because my opacity is set to 30%. If I bring that up to 100, now when I do this hole, you can see I'm cutting right down through the, the blue layer down to the orange layer. And it's feathered, that's because my brush is feathered. I can also make a hard edge and we cut through like that. Now to show you what this actually looks like on the mask, you can kind of see it down in this thumbnail, but if I hold the option key on a Mac or Alt on a PC, you can actually see what my mask looks like. Now this is again, just showing you an overlay of the holes that I've just cut through this blue down to the orange. I can turn the layer mask on and off just by holding the shift key and clicking. So that turns the mask off, I turn it back on, and there you go. The great thing about layer mask is that they're non-destructive. So let's say I wanna bring some blue back to where this orange is, I can easily do that. So I wanna make sure I have my mask selected again, and I'm gonna to toggle to white and now whenever I brush, I'm actually brushing that top layer right back in. And I could feather it out. And if I hold option again on this mask, you can see how my mask has changed. And that's the basics of layer masking. Now let's try another example with three colors and see how that relationship might work. So I'm gonna add a new layer. And I'm gonna go ahead and just fill that with maybe like a nice green. Okay, so now I got my green layer on top, my blue layer, and then my orange layer. And I'm gonna move this mask up and I can do that simply by clicking and dragging it. And I'm gonna choose my brush and I wanna make sure I have my mask selected, not the pixel base layer, because watch what happens. If I start painting on the pixel base layer, you can see I'm actually painting on that and I'm not really drilling a hole anymore. So I'm gonna undo that, Command Z. Choose my mask. And now when I paint, I gotta make sure I have black selected. I'm gonna hit the X key to switch back. Now when I paint, even though I've got black selected, I'm painting on the mask, I'm cutting down to the blue. And if I come down to this next layer, I can add another mask. And if I paint in the same spot, I can cut down to the orange, and there it is. Now, instead of trying to align these holes, what might actually be easier, if I wanted to paint orange inside of this blue, 
would be to create a mask and invert it. And now this is where things can get a little confusing. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw this blue mask away. I'm gonna hold option and throw that into the trash can. Now, if I want orange to appear here, what's actually an easier method rather than trying to drill all the way through this layer stack, especially if you had a big layer stack of 10 or more layers, what's actually easier is to take the orange to the top. Now you can see we can see nothing but orange. We'll add a layer mask. And now instead of painting black onto this mask, we're going to invert the mask to black completely so you can't see anything in this layer. So on a Mac, that's Command I, that'd be Control I on a PC. And now we can't see anything of this orange layer. Even though the eyeball's on, you can see nothing's happening. So now all we have to do is come and choose a white brush, and now we can paint orange into the center. And we don't have to worry about lining things up. I can also paint orange anywhere else. Okay, so this looks pretty good, but what if I wanted to bring some blue in here too, but blue's on the bottom? Well, in this case, I could try and align the layer mask, but what might actually be easier is to just duplicate this layer. So I'm gonna hit Command J to duplicate. That'd be Control J on a PC, drag it to the top. Now you can see all we can see is blue. So we're gonna do the same thing, create a black, create a layer mask, Command, or control I to invert it. And we have white selected still. And now I can go ahead and paint blue in here as well. Okay, there we go. We got a beautiful piece of artwork. So let's apply this to a real world scenario. I'm gonna load up some actual photographs now. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop and I have three photos loaded up. I've got a dark one, a medium and a bright one. And we're gonna use layer mask to blend these together. So I've got this dark one here and that's going to be just for our highlights, anywhere that we need that. And then this mid-tone is going to be for most of our sky and maybe some water down here. And then this last one is kind of our base for these really dark shadow areas. So we're going to start here. I'm going to go ahead and create the new layer mask. And I'm going to hit the B key. And we're just going to do this manually. Now this is not the most selective technique, but it's a technique that can work if you're just getting the hang of layer mask. There are other ways in Photoshop to create really refined selections, but we're not gonna get into that in this video because I just wanna show you the basics of layer mask and how they work. So we have white selected in our brush. We have a white mask, so that means we need to invert that. So we'll go to black, and then you can see I can just kind of paint through the sky. So you can see what's happening here. I can turn the mask on and off. And that's pretty decent, and I'm just gonna kind of Lower my opacity, I was at 100%. I'm gonna bring that down to maybe about, maybe 34% here. And then I can just kind of feather in here. Now I am darkening the foreground too, so I gotta be a little careful, but that's okay. Things that are off in the distance typically are a little bit darker anyway. So I can kind of blend like this. Maybe bring my, low, my opacity down to 20% now. And I'm just gonna kind of brush in here. I don't want this to be too bright, otherwise it's gonna look unnatural. Okay, and so if you recall back to when we had our color swatches, instead of trying to cut a hole through both of these layers, the easier thing to do is gonna be to take this dark layer and bring it up to the top. And I'm gonna create a layer mask, and now I'm going to invert it, Command-I, Control-I on a PC. And now where I have these bright highlights, I'm gonna do really low opacity, probably 20% still. And instead of painting black, which I have selected, I need to go to white, because I have a black mask. And I can just kind of brush this in, maybe even 10%, because I just wanna feather it in ever so gently. Just to bring some color in those, those highlight areas. Now again, this isn't the most refined way to do this. There are better ways to select just the highlights, but we're not gonna get to that in this video because this is an intro video and I'm trying to get you to use layer mask and not scare you away from them. The great thing about layer mask is they allow you to fine tune them with opacity. So let's say I like this, but it's just a little too much. I can bring down the opacity of this layer 
and that's gonna bring some of those light tones back in. So maybe something like that is, is what we want. And I'll hit a snapshot and so you can kind of see that was our one image, our bright image, and now this is where we are with a nice blended image. Let's try one more. Now the great thing about layer mask is they can be applied to any type of layer. It doesn't just have to be a photo or pixel based layer. We can also apply a layer mask to an adjustment layer. So to show you how that works, I'm gonna go down to my adjustment layers and I'm just gonna add a curves layer here. And I'll create an S curve just to add a little bit of contrast in the image. Maybe something like that. And I can turn the layer on and off so you kind of see the before and after. And now it looks pretty good, but if I think it's getting too bright in certain areas, I can easily brush that out. So I make sure I have the layer mask selected, switch to black, and I hit my B key to get to the brush. And I've, right now I've got 80% opacity. I may take that down to about 60. And I can just kind of brush it out if any hot spot in the image. So that was a subtractive process to a layer mask. Let's do another one where we add. So I'm gonna go ahead and add another adjustment layer. This time, maybe I'll do a photo filter, a warming filter, just so you can kind of get an idea of how this works. Maybe something like that. And now, instead of applying it to the entire image, we'll just invert it. So again, Command-I on a Mac, Control-I on a PC, and then we can switch our brush to white because we have a black mask. And let's go to our opacity and take it down a little bit. And maybe we just want to warm up the bottom part of this image where it's looking a little purpley. And I'll just kind of do a couple of passes here. I could probably bring the opacity up. Maybe I'll go to like 50. And I just hit the number five key to go to 50. And there we go. So that's a way of adding to a mask instead of subtracting from a mask. As you can see, layer masks are extremely powerful and there's a lot you can do with them. And I'll be creating a couple more videos to demonstrate more advanced masking options in the future. So don't forget to subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. That way you'll be notified the next time I release a video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And of course, don't forget to check out naturemike.com for more how-to articles, in-field workshops, and private virtual lessons in Photoshop and Lightroom. I'll see you in the next video.